As software takes a more pivotal role in our daily life, the need for engineering methods to develop software systems is fundamental in order to obtain safeness, reliability, adaptability to changing requirements, and full control of costs. There are numerous ways to go about creating software, but all of them include a basic list of steps which in the end result in a functioning and distributed program. These steps are a part of the software engineering life cycle. Teams of software engineers are usually commissioned by a client to create a desired software product. The first step is gathering client requirements. This is when the client tells the software developers what they want a possible software to do for them. A feasibility study is also run to check if the software that the client is demanding is realizable. In fact, the client usually doesn't know much about software, and it is up to the software engineers to understand whether what the client is asking is too expensive or unreasonable. After obtaining the requirements, software engineers can create an outline for the software system in the design phase, just like you would create a plan before writing an essay. To design effective software, a technique called modularization is used to split the software system into smaller components, called modules, each executing a smaller subtask. Altogether, these modules work to execute the desired task. This allows the creation of a clear outline easier to be put in practice in the following phase. With a clear idea of what's needed to be done and how it's supposed to be done, the software engineers can start the actual coding process and create a concrete product. Each module is transformed into a small program, and when put together they form one complete software. The choice of the programming language is very important, as each language is optimized to execute certain tasks more efficiently as opposed to others. For instance, one language may allow operations to be executed more efficiently on a given hardware, whilst another language may ease the process of modularization. Look at it like this. Choosing the right programming language is like choosing the right tool for the job. Sure, you can use a hammer to unscrew a bolt, but it would probably be more efficient to use a wrench. But how do you make sure there are no errors in your code? That's where testing comes in. Software engineers test their program both during and after the coding process to check if it works. After coding, testing can be divided into two sub-phases, software validation and software verification. Software validation examines if the outcome of the coding process satisfies the requirements agreed on at the start of the process. Software verification tests if the software works accurately. Consider it like this. Software validation answers the question, are we building the right product? While software verification answers the question, are we building the product right? If the program presents any problem during the testing process, Changes need to be made to the code or even to the design of the program. This is the reason why in most cases the testing phase takes around 50% of the whole costs or resources of the software development process. Now you have a running program which seems to work as it should. The next step is to make sure the software product is correctly implemented. In simple cases, this means making the software available to be installed on users' machines. After a complete software product is on the market, the last stage is maintenance. Even after all these steps to make sure the software product is the best it possibly could, some more problems could emerge after exposure to its user's community. This phase also includes changes due to evolving requirements. The process of software development is still error-prone, as it is always up to humans to find solutions to problems that may come up throughout the development process. But what if there was a way to mathematically identify the best possible solution at given instances in the process? That's what research in search-based software engineering is about. Instead of using the human's common sense to find a solution, different methods are used to choose the optimal solution among a set of many solutions. As research progresses in this field, higher levels of automations are expected, leading to complex mathematical tools capable to guarantee no errors in transitions from one phase to the next in the software development cycle. In the future, we might arrive at a point where computers could even program themselves.